to the J Train Podcast. That's right. Every Tuesday and Friday, with your emails, your questions, your stories, we take them, we read them, we answer them. That's right. Come to the J Train Podcast. Get your problem solved with a little bit of loving, a little bit of tender, a little bit of care. We hug you in your ear hole. This feels like a J Train production. The J Train Podcast. You're here. It's a Friday. Get into it right now. Kick those shoes off. Move those toesies. Feather my nuts. Feather my nuts. Feather my nuts. Tell a friend. Tell a co-worker. Tell a brother. A sister. A mama. A papa. Here we're at Feather Nation Studios. Capacity crowd. We're here. Listen, this whole thing exists because of you, the listeners. I want to thank you. Thank you for telling a friend. Thank you for telling a coworker. That's how this whole thing works. Right, Shelby? That's the only way. It's the only way. There's no billboards. We don't have billboards. We don't have signs on buses. We don't have, uh, you know, signs on the bus stops. No taxi TV. No taxi TV. No gas Slow down this. Let's slow down this, uh... Let the saxophone us play for a second. No, no. This is a wild song. I hear the saxophone and I'm like, this guy definitely has a ponytail that's a low pony. It's a dude with a low pony and it's a little curly at the end. It's not like a straight ponytail. It's a little poof. That the guy puts back because he has curly, dewy hair, but he's putting it into a ponytail, <laughs> so it just hangs back. And he's a little bit bald on top. But it's a pleasure to be here. Um, listen, people, that's how it works. We don't have taxi TV. We have nothing. We have nothing. We have you. Mm-hmm. We have the listeners. And you got to tell a friend, tell a coworker, a brother, a sister, a mama, a papa, anyone with ears, we take them. Okay. You need to do it. You need to do it. That's how we grow. Support the sponsors. Tell a friend, a coworker, anyone with ears. We're very excited for today's guest. A new guest alert. Ring that bell, Shelby. <laughs> it's the moment you've all been waiting for. A new guest. Akash Singh, everybody. Can I give you two compliments up Please, top? I'll take a compliment. Number one, that on. intro. Yeah, oh, Fantastic. thank you. Fantastic. Totes preach. Fantastic. Number really two, appreciate that. I was just telling this to Sam and Shelby and James, who left as soon as the podcast started. I'm so impressed by what you've done. Oh. Thank you very you've much. You've taken these things that our girlfriend slash fiance for me, wife, whatever, make us do. Yeah. And you have made it. A career. You're the guy women come to <laughs> to learn about guys. That, and you're not like a bitch ass dude, which is great for us. I appreciate that. But this Thank I'm you, so man. dude. People come to my doorstep, they my travel <laughs> far and wide, and they're like, please, please they help do, me. And you're yeah. the guy. I'm apparently my for some of these makes, people. Makes me watch The Bachelor every week. Thank you. Yeah, this is And like, I never <laughs> thought this, this could be lucrative. Yeah, this is a thing. God damn, man. This is and I'm into it, and I got to pretend I'm not, and you just owned it. There's and no pretending. You, There's nothing to pretend. I've been into it, but this wasn't like, you know what's interesting? It never was thought that way. Like, I, I think a lot of people, like, you know, there's someone that actually sent an email, and I think this is a, a pertinent, is that, is that the word, pertinent? Very. Very. Uh, very pertinent. Very pertinent email. The more I say it, the more wrong it feels. My man's voice is crazy. Yo, I did not Shelby's got a great voice. Yo, wow. Knows how to bring it. I felt feelings. This guy, this woman wrote, is doing what you love all it's cracked up to be. Ooh. 
Let's get right into this email because I think it's I I right. because I never like I like yelling at the Bachelor. I like talking about the Bachelor. <laughs> I could go on and on and on, but I've loved reality TV my whole life. Good email alert. Yeah, it's a good email. Yeah, I wouldn't. I didn't. I just have to watch it. Now. Well, that's it. You got a fiance. You're yeah. you're engaged. Yeah, When's yeah, the yeah. marriage? When's October. the wedding? October. October. Are you doing so? Full Indian. Uh, full. In, so why oh is God. the Indian culture so wedding? Like, why know. is weddings big for you guys? I don't know. That's a great question. I think we're very family centered. So this is the beginning of you're going to have kids traditionally, like go mm. give us kids. Yeah. So this is a huge deal. And then the families are huge because we want kids. So the family all comes together and it's just this, just morphed into this crazy thing. Ours is She's Indian? Be, yeah. I, Which now, I'm very happy about, but not at wedding time. <laughs> but, this is what, but this is what I wonder, like, you know, Jews are family people. Yeah, but you're also Jews, so you're not spending yeah, we're not spending. That's <laughs> fair. But we're also not, we're like, like we have, like, I think also, like, we don't have big families. Like, it's not a lot of, maybe the Hasidics have big families, but, like, I, they have, but you, like, Indians are known for, like, like, oh, that's my cousin. Like, yeah, everyone's yeah, yeah. your cousin. Everyone's my cousin. Everyone's, my, and white, my white friends would always be like, that's not your fucking cousin. I'd be like, yeah, man, I've known him my whole life. How's that not my cousin? Is it, is it really a cousin, though? Probably distant. All my family friends are like fifth, eighth cousins or something. But, like, we're just, that's my brother or that's my... We don't is even there confusion cousins. with dating? Like, is there ever a point where you're like, this guy's, this woman's, like, far down the cousin line enough? Like, what? how do you differentiate? You how specific it used to be? Because we used to have arranged marriages, and now it's morphing. But my dad's side of the family would always marry girls from one specific village. So really? I don't know if that was systematic to, like... I'm sure there's different reasons. Maybe one of them was like, at least this way they're not cousins. But like, just like that's it's just a way to know. Yeah, that's where you're going. It was like you're not. My dad found out he was getting married the day of his wedding. Come on. He was at another family member's wedding, and then his cousins came up and told him like, "Hey, it's time it's to happen. Time yeah. to go." Yeah, and just he was like, "Holy fuck, he's getting it's like get, for it's, clothes on the way there, dude." That's like getting cut in the NFL. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like a guy coming up to it's you. It's all like, over. Being like, hey, man, time to go. Yeah, yeah, dream is over. And your dad's still with your mom? Yeah, yeah. And do you ever think to yourself, like, man, life that way would be easier? All the time. Now, my girl and I basically made it, like, we're just like, this is it. We're going to make it work through all the ups and downs. And it's been been awful at times, and now it's great and whatever, and we worked through it. But, like, yeah, that's easy, man. There's no thought involved. Like, you just marry somebody, and then you make it work. And if you're not pieces of shit, it should work. And you just, you, if you're like saying there's no out. Yeah, you just got to work through it. There is no out in India. Now there's divorces, but before, no, no chance. This is all, I always wondered why the Indian wedding was like this. Because like Jews marry quick, die quick. Oh, we live. The husband will die pretty quickly. For but no, no, but what I mean is uh, that the wedding, mm-hmm. the nuptials take like five minutes. Oh, no. ours are. And then when you die, you go right in the ground. Yeah. Get rid of you. We're cremating. We're spreading ashes. It's a whole. Thing. It's a whole thing. Whole thing. Well, this person asked. Well, uh, back to the Bachelor. The the reason the Bachelor. Like I love watching those shows. So I, when I go to like I and I've always liked watching them, and I've always liked watching them with women, for like girls I've it's dated. More fun that way, it's yeah. more fun because I'll have like a perspective that maybe they didn't expect, or yes. they'll, and it's like a little bit off. You know, it's you're like being on stage because you're, like you're saying things they don't expect that are wild. They're laughing at your perspective because they're used to watching and talking about it with their female friends. So like I've always like enjoyed these shows enough yeah. to have a knowledge. So it wasn't like I was faking it. Right. But this person, Jared, can you share more about what you led you to leave a career behind to pursue a career in comedy? There have been many times when I've thought about leaving behind the security of the job I have for something more creative and risky that I think would be more fulfilling, make me happier, etc. And I would love to hear more about that process was like for you. How did you know that a career in comedy was really what you wanted to do? Not just a fun fantasy job like the ones many of us have in our heads that just uh, the thought of uh, gets us through the monotony of nine to five. I have a hard time determining if I should take myself seriously when I think about leaving my current job or if I'm just living. 
living in an unrealistic fantasy land. What was the process like mentally for, uh, from the first time the thought of being a comedian popped in your head to when you put in your two weeks notice? Did you doubt your decision along the way? And what made you push through those doubts? Do you ever think about what your life would be like now if you stayed with your finance job mentally, emotionally, financially, logistically, etc.? Do you have any regrets or doubts? Do you think not until reading this email? I remember now I'm like, oh my God, should I have regrets and doubts? Son, you'd have been rich. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh no. What am I doing here? Ah! Akash, you've made the, you, you're a professional comedian. Yeah. Do you have any of these thoughts? Uh, All the what? time. I was supposed to be a doctor. I was doing the full Indian thing. You were going to be a doctor? I was going to be a doctor. Now I didn't get great Anesthesiologist. Oh. Going to happen. Could have. I mean, yeah. I, I didn't get great grades. I'd have had to, okay. like, figure it out, back end it somehow. But, but like, like the marriage, happened. you're going to work through it. It would have happened. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just, I think this path is a, a great path, but, man, it's sacrifice, dude. It is. It's different. Sacrifice. I um, I think the, but what made me think of this email yeah. is exactly what you're saying. Like, I think the problem with, a job in the creative field is that you have to love doing it and show that you love doing it. Like you have to like, like you have a, you have a podcast flagrant yeah. two. Yes. yes. How, what's your, I want to make sure people listen to it. Give it's us the one minute synopsis. Like, what do you do on the show? Uh, it's, it's a sports podcast. Kind of, we talk sports, but it's also just two friends hanging out. And yeah. the idea is if a joke is funny, it's not offensive and that's it. Okay. And if, if you want to check out a funny episode, there's one called Franks and beans. I think that's, about an hour and a half in is eight minutes. That is the most offensive and hilarious eight minutes that you can hear on a podcast, I think. And I loved it. And that's that's what we like doing. Of course. And it's you and Andrew Schultz. Me and Andrew Schultz, yeah. And that's a great... And you guys have been friends for a long time. Friends so it's for, like it yeah. goes... There's... There's, it's a worked in couch. It is the friendship. It's just we're bringing it to it. It's kind of like what you're saying. Yeah, we just... We love doing this stuff. So we just brought it to a... But that, that's the thing, like, you know, where... You guys enjoy hanging out. Yeah. I enjoy watching The Bachelor. I enjoy right. writing about the people as they, you know, come in. Like, I remember, like, and I think to anyone that's, like, looking to switch careers or looking to get into, like, I guess creative. I hate calling it creative because it makes me feel like such a douchebag. Like, I, like, I'm fucking yeah. writing about farts. You know, like, I, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, it's not that <laughs> involved. But I, I, I do have, you have regrets, you have things. But I think digging into the things you love doing and making those projects a job. Yeah. So, like, The Bachelor, I don't get paid for The Bachelor. I do have people that come to the shows because they enjoy what I do with The Bachelor. Right. So it's like, oh, that, you know, it's like it's a little bit of a trickle-down economy there. It all leads somewhere. It all leads somewhere. I think that's, you know, this woman that's writing in, I appreciate her email. I think... If you boil it down, like I remember when I left my job, I was like, I just want to be funny for money. Yeah. That was like my whole thing. I want to be able to live off of being funny. Yeah. And that was like my credo, yeah. you know, and it still is. And I still think about that every day. And I think the more you boil down what you're looking to do, like if you're like, I want to paint for money. All right. And that to me, it's, being funny for money has also made me not choosy with how I'm funny. That's what led me to a podcast. That's what led me to yelling at the bachelor. Is it funny? That's you great. Know? Dude. Like, that's, that's great. Everybody else overthinks. I overthink it all the time. It's funny easy to money. overthink. So I do too. But yeah. that's what we all want to do. We all yeah. just and it's a lot of comics were guilty of not admitting to the money part of this and not admitting oh, not to like no, no, no. this, this is a business. Rich, I want to yeah. I want this to grow. I want this to be you know shit fruitful. On yeah. yeah. I, want, I want to shit on people. Some yeah. Pio. And I want to pay good money for it. Exactly. So I I. So I hear so I think like it starts with here's something I enjoy doing and then making it consistent. So I've done that with the podcast. I enjoy taking these emails from listeners. Yeah. I right, every Tuesday. Oh, we're gonna add another day. Every Tuesday and Friday. Yeah. Okay. Then the the Bachelor. I remember when I first started live tweeting it, um, I I had always watched reality TV. Like I was big on like Joe Millionaire and like Flavor of Love. Like I love reality TV. And then I was sick one night. And my brother and I lived together, and I started live, and I started tweeting about the Bachelor because it was on TV, yeah. and I didn't have any shows that night. So I started tweeting. The tweets started doing really well, and I'm like, "Oh shit, people are listening. I'm getting to be funny." Yeah. And then I, my brother and I would just sit there, and I started. I like was. I remember having a cold that night and staying in, and then being like, I, "These are really getting attention. People really yeah, like yeah. these tweets." Yeah. So I kept doing it. 
I'm like, oh, get to be funny. Right. I'm adding, and now I'm adding followers from it. Yeah. Now I'm being funny for money. Followers are a form of currency to me. So now people are coming in, and I'm going, okay. So now it started as that. Then I would do it only when I, like, came home. I would do the end of it. I would do the last half hour. Then I saw the response. I was like, the response is so huge. I can take one night a week. 100% you take To one do night my side yeah. job. Yeah. Now I'm doing a job for free. I'm Every Monday night, I'm clearing out the schedule for my new job. Yeah. And then I moved it to Instagram stories the last couple seasons. You're and being it, funny for potential money. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and also making it a job. Yeah. Even though it's not a paying job, I've, I go Bachelor Mondays, I stay in to watch and yell at The Bachelor. And, you know, Shelby helps me put up, you know, graphics. And then I, and like my girlfriend, she gets a little annoyed. Like by the end of it, she's like, you've been doing this for three hours. Fucking stop. You know, it's over. Isn't it weird how they get annoyed, but they don't get annoyed when we buy them shit? <laughs> ain't, that, ain't that a funny thing? You well, are too what, hard. I hey, say to her. Purse. Oh, thanks for working. <laughs> yeah. That lasts for one day. I say to her, I go, I and I'm, I'll be done. It'll always happen towards the end. And I'll go. And it'll be over, and then I'll put up. There's the last slide I put up is my dates, right? And that gets the most swipe ups from people that I get throughout the whole week, right? And I said to her, I go, and I said kind of the same thing you're saying right now. I go, I have to finish the job. This is the job. I know, no, I'm not going to you know, Mr. Flintstone and and checking out. I'm not taking my pay stub and going ching ching. Yeah. But I am finishing the job that, that I slide set to do. Is the timestamp? That's ching, the time. Ching. Yeah, that's when that's I it. check out. Yeah, that's yeah. right. There it's it just is. like, <laughs> what's the name of the Flintstones boss? Mr. Rockstone, Mr. Gladstone. Sure. Come on, Fred Flintstones boss. Mr. Rockhead. It's definitely a rock thing. You know what's crazy? My niece takes Eric Stone Street. Eric, Mr. Slate. Mr. Slate. <laughs> Bro, I forgot everybody. This was crazy. My niece takes Flintstone vitamins, has no clue who the Flintstones are. Just has the vitamins. Got the it's, vitamins. It's vitamins now. Vi and Fruity Pebbles. That's what you're doing. And has no idea what the cartoon Nothing. is? Nothing. We asked her what the Flintstones was, and she looked at us like we were asking her fucking Arabic. Like, just what's But what she did, she still likes it? Like, it's just... Love the vitamins. Takes that's, like, <laughs> that's like when um, orange becomes a smell. Like, you have yeah. orange markers, and you're like, yeah, it just smells like orange. Yeah. Now it's like, oh, what are you eating? F you know, Flintstones? <laughs> now it's just the name of the food. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah, I don't... Do, so I, I think for this person that's writing in, if anyone's looking to, like... You know, I, I'm not fucking Gary V. I'm just, I'm not telling you how to chase your dream. You have to want to do, do it. You got the black T-shirt on, though. I do have the black T. I got the hat. But I, Jerry V. Jared V. Yeah, I'm Jared. You got to go fucking hard, <laughs> motherfucker. Oh, you got to go for your fucking dream. Because you don't know. Put on some, like, <laughs> intensity music. This is Gary. Gary V, his whole thing is just, I swear... Do you want to live? <laughs> Do you want to fucking live? Are you looking to live a fucking life? Are you fucking living or what? fucking dying? Are you fucking living or are you fucking dying? Because every day you don't chase your dream, you're fucking ash on this earth. <laughs> and every day you do chase your dream, that's when you fly. You fucking fly. Buy my shoes, buy my wine. Yeah, that's, that's Gary V. I, but I'm saying to this person, like, you gotta, I think the one thing people get embarrassed about is when they don't make it into their job. Like, yeah. consider it your job. Even if it's not your paying job. Monday nights, I check in with Mr. Slate. Good evening, Mr. Slate. Cha-ching. Yeah. Yeah. And then I check out after I'm done after I put the post on Instagram and I say tag your friends. That's why I'm so persistent about tagging your friends. You're very professional, much, much more so than most comedians. It makes perfect sense you had a finance background. Sure. Because you don't like rub it in people's face, but the way you approach this is very businesslike. That's yeah, I think I think it's by. like in one time someone told me that it it it, it takes high personal uh, value. I do offer a value to people. I think that's also a thing. Like, when you go for something creative, I think we, like, we want to downplay it. Like, I do downplay yeah. it. Like, yeah, I, I'm going to make fart noises yeah, for an yeah, hour. Yeah. You know, we're talking about, you know, your, your Franks and Beans on Flanker too. Go yeah. follow that. Go go listen to the podcast. It's easy to, like, 
uh, demean it. Yeah, because you you feel modest, and people some people don't get threatened by it. Yeah, you're not people saving like, people, but yeah. you're maybe someone getting a laugh, and you're helping someone out. So yeah. there's a value. Hell yeah! I want you all to go follow Akash. He's so funny. A- Akash or Akash? I say Akash, but I Akash. honestly don't even really know because I know Indians who say Akash. I know Indians who say Akash. I don't know. I flub on Indian names because you guys put the emphasis on different syllables yeah, 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 yeah. every time. Yeah, yeah. Like Nimesh. He's a fucking idiot. Nimesh Patel is my guy, <laughs> but his name is Nimesh, all right? Nimesh? I mean, his, like, region, his goofy-ass region, Gujaratis, they do things differently, and okay. none of us like them. But <laughs> Nim- it's Nimesh as far as I'm concerned. Nimesh. I call him Nimesh, Nimesh. now because, like, I feel well, bad. Well, then he said, and then, like, uh, you know... I was calling Hassan Minaj was That's Hassan Hussain. Minaj. But he it's also, Hussain. he didn't correct anybody until a year ago when he fucking This happens in the Ellis NBA no all the time. This happens in, in sports all the time. They'll <laughs> be saying a name for like six years. Yeah, and but the, I don't care. I don't care how white people say my name. I care how Indians say their own names. Like, that's my name. So well, that's, how I own it is on me. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I'm always listening for the person to say, but then how often do you say your own name? Oh, very rarely. Introduction, yeah. and nobody, I don't ever listen to anybody's name. I met Shelby and she- Sam, and I had to ask them their names again. Yeah. all I'm focusing on is not fucking up the handshake. Let me get web to web, good eye contact, whatever the fuck else he says, I don't yeah. care. That's all I'm thinking about. Akash is so funny. At Akash Singh on Instagram, it'll be on my Instagram today. Go follow, go follow. Flagrant 2, that's the podcast. Him and Andrew Schultz, hilarious podcast. You're going to love it. They put up such great stuff. Thank you, Videos, man. all stuff. You're gonna. They have a whole world we going studio on. studio we're it, building up. It's beautiful, Come awesome. By. I would love to. So go check out Flagrant 2. He is going to be doing shows, and we got to support these people that come through here. Montreal. Uh, March 12th through 14th. The Den in Chicago, March 27th. Vancouver Playhouse, May 7th. Vancouver, Vancouver, Vancouver. I know you're out there. Go, go, go see Akash. May 7th at the Vancouver Playhouse. AkashSing.com? Yeah, A-K-A-A-S-H. There it is. Go find it. Let's do some emails. You ready? Hell yeah. JTrainPodcast at gmail.com. JTrainPodcast at gmail.com. Ooh. Dancing with other guys when in a relationship. I think it depends on how you're dancing. So I just made things official with a guy who've been casually dating for the past year. He's not really the jealous type, but but brought up by uh the way the way fact that I the way the fact that I often dance with other guys on the dance floor when we go out. I don't go out too often, but when I do, I love letting loose on the dance floor and having fun. Okay. This is a betrayal <laughs> on levels that no one's ever seen. Play the music, because we, <laughs> like, it is funny to me. It's like, I don't go out. This feels like the drunk on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, just like, yeah. oh, I don't go out much, but yeah. when I do, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. my boyfriend isn't as much of a quote-unquote free spirit, okay, <laughs> In the way I, as I am, so sometimes I'll be dancing alone or just with a group of girls. So it's inevitable that some guys come up and dance with me. I hear her. I don't mind it because, uh, to me, that's part of the fun in it all. But it upsets my boyfriend who thinks it's in a, isn't appropriate to dance with other guys when I'm dating him. She's out on the dance yeah, floor yeah, yeah. Yeah. with uh, all her friends. Yeah. I'm supposed to go out this weekend with some girlfriends, and I'm sure there will be instances where guys... Try and dance with me. I don't want to do things to disrespect him or show that I'm not faithful girlfriend, but also don't think it's reasonable for him to force me to limit my interactions on the dance floor when it's all just in good fun. And I have no intentions of taking it past a simple dance. Do you think my boyfriend's reasonable and ask me to uh, if all uh, uh, ask asking this is of me if it's all d- only dancing? What she do we a lot think? Of typos? What the hell's going on with this girl? It was a tough get sentence to get she's out of here. Right now. <laughs> she's not on the dance floor now. Can I tell you I completely 180 from the beginning of this email to the end? Okay. In the beginning, I was like, this girl is out here acting all whorish. <laughs> but then she says, I don't make it a point to dance with other guys. I dance by myself. Sure. I just love dancing. Or when my girlfriends and guys come up, this dude is a pussy. You got to get on the dance floor. Well, that's the thing. He, she's very cute. She wants a celeb look like Shelby has a keen knack. Okay. For figuring out the celeb look alike. It's, um, she's very cute. I, I, I'm with you. This is all based in his insecurity. Do we have yeah, any? Yeah, I bet he ugly as fuck too. Well, 
<laughs> I wouldn't say he's ugly, but I, I he definitely can't dance. No picture of this guy. Well, where is he? Yeah. She's cute. She definitely, he can't dance. I can't dance. Are you a dancer? I'm a great dancer, but really? I had to learn because I was insecure about it. Yeah. And I didn't want to be with some girl. I never was with girls at the time, but like, I didn't want that scenario to come up down the road. I have, I, here's what bothers me. Like, I'm not going out there and going crazy on a dance floor. Like, I'm not, I'm you dancing. Don't you don't but have that's to. the thing. All you got to do is move right, move left, move yeah. right, move left, shoulder, shoulder, look down, look up, shoulder, shoulder, right, left, right, left, right, left. That's it. I refuse to believe dancing isn't fun for anyone. You just are insecure about dancing. Well, this is what happens. A lot of times, I'll go out and dance and let loose. I would never. Here's what people do when you dance. Yeah. We're not walking around dancing all day long. Like, we yeah. don't walk the streets like it's a Broadway musical. Yeah, correct. So well, I kind of do, but I'm an idiot. Okay, but that's fine. Yeah. Once in a while, you get a little shake yeah. in your step. You're feeling good. Of course. I get it. Here's what bothers me, though. People see you dance and they go, whoa, <laughs> you look who's dancing. And you're like, yeah, that's what we're fucking here for. Yeah. Why am I like all you're doing is making me self-conscious when all of us are doing right step, left step, right step, left step. It's a human instinct to dance when music is on. Yeah. You're the fucking weirdo standing still. You're the one looking at me like I'm a crazy person. Like they, people always do this to me. They'll go, oh, look at Jared dancing. And it's like, you do you, I'll do me. Yeah. Fuck off. Look at you standing still, you fucking yeah. weirdo. Should she stop dancing? Should break she do up anything? with this guy. Break up with him. Straight <laughs> up. Game over. Straight up. Make him real. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Right. here. No, you're fired. You're fired. Apprentice him. <laughs> I think here's, here's, there's a, it's a gray area. I agree with you. At first, I'm like, here's where I was like on his side. When she wrote, yeah. my boyfriend isn't as much of a free spirit yeah. as me. <laughs> Every time someone is kind of wrong, they blame it on their free spirit. Correct. It's usually a euphemism for I'm wild as fuck. I'm wild. And uh, yeah, so so what? I touched the inside of a guy's leg. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I do understand there's a... there. You're out there dancing with friends. I understand that's like a fucking flame and moths flying to the flame. Oh, yeah. Guys are going to come out there, totally understand that. They dance with you. You dance in the group, and then there's a point where you have to go, come on. You have to try and get your boyfriend out of his comfort zone. That's yeah. what we're all, that's what these relationships are. A lot of times it's just teaching another person the different things that they wouldn't teach themselves. And that's a nice part of a relationship. I think the mature answer is, yeah, you don't, like, if you're throwing it back on a guy who comes up to you and, like, putting your ass in his crotch, that's wild. It's different. You're out, you're on the wrong. But if you're just kind of dancing, then your boyfriend got to step up and just learn. If yeah. that makes me insecure, there's a very easy solution. And that's, I learned two simple steps, and then I'm on the floor. If you have to describe what you're doing as, I'm a free spirit, you've gone too far. <laughs> I think you've gone too far. Because <laughs> that's, cause that's usually <laughs> yeah, the usually. point where you go, what, you're not allowed to have incense on the dance floor? <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, you've gone a little, a little crazy here. I yeah. felt like this time, though, she was trying to protect him. By the end of the email, at the beginning, I was like, oh, she's crazy. Yeah. By the end, I was like, oh, she just wants to make him look less weird. So she's like, I dance. I'm a free spirit. No, you're just a human being. No, you you're just a human being who dances. You're yeah. right. Because now she's supposed to go out this girl this weekend with girlfriends. Go out. Go dance. Let a guy rub his crotch up on you. Who cares? It's not the biggest <laughs> deal in the world. Feel good about yourself. If your boyfriend's there, you have to be a little bit more respectful, a little bit wary, but also encourage him to get involved. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing yeah. where he kind of feels left out and then he's like, I'm the loser who doesn't dance. So everyone's a loser who doesn't dance. Yeah. yeah. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Here with Akash Singh. Akash Singh. However you want to See, say I'm it. always. Akash is how I say it. Akash, Akash Singh. Yeah. At Akash Singh, he's gonna be in Vancouver, people. Ooh, we Hell love yeah. Vancouver. We're here. just there, just there. They've got Uber now, so everything's good. I'm so happy. We're sponsor people. Scentbird, Scentbird, Scentbird. There's no better feeling than someone coming up to you and saying, "You smell amazing." What are you wearing? That it's a good feeling. Good feeling, yeah. Shelby. Definitely better than the opposite. De yeah, it, you you smell like shit. You yeah, don't want to hear. It's the worst. I go up to people all the time on the streets just randomly. You smell amazing. And then they go, get away from me. What the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, okay, sorry I whispered in your ear. Problem is great cologne can be expensive and that means you don't get to change up scents as often as you want. That's the thing. Here's what I love about Scentbird. They've cracked the code. 
Mm. Okay. Scentbird was like you're paying for a bottle that's been designed by Picasso and yes. you're paying for a commercial with Johnny Depp covered in scarves. <laughs> and you're like and that you're paying Black for Johnny. Right. This is why you're paying for cologne. All that money of your cologne purchase is going towards Johnny Depp's scarves collection. I always wonder like how how much are you paying Natalie Portman to it, do well, this. This is what I'm wondering. Mm. If Natalie Portman got thirty million dollars to be in like that Elizabeth Taylor commercial has been playing every Christmas since I've been born. Yeah. Yeah. These have always brought me luck. Do you know the commercial? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> These have always brought me luck. I know that commercial. Elizabeth Taylor's family. Yeah. We shouldn't been, even know Elizabeth Taylor. We shouldn't know. All I know is these have always brought me luck. Get her out. Get, Get her, her out. out. I, like Flintstones vitamins. <laughs> this is the same thing. Yeah. I know Elizabeth Taylor for cologne in the same way your cousin knows the Flintstones, Flintstones for food, for yeah. Su- sustenance. Yeah. So Semper looked at this whole model and they were like, no, 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 no. They're like, we're going to give you 30 sprays every month. And we're going to send them to your door. It's going to be a nondiscreet packaging. It's not going to be this big, bulky Voss urn that you're going to have to put in your bathroom. And you're going to be able to switch it up because it's not price prohibitive. Mm. So you, so Semper, they, and they work with the best brands. This ain't, they're just changing the bottling. Versace, Gucci, Tom Ford, Kenneth Cole, Burberry, and Prada. Damn. So we have an exclusive offer for J-Train listeners. You get 30, 30, 30, 30% off your first month today. That's only $10 for your first fragrance. I mean, that's Ooh, that's pretty. Tom fantastic. Ford for 10 bucks. Don't Just, mind if I do. That's right. Even the second bottle's not that expensive. What was that, 15 bucks after that? That's Go cheap. to scentbird.com slash JTrain. Use my promo code JTrain, JTrain, JTrain for 30% off your first fragrance. Again, that's S-C-E-N-T bird.com slash JTrain to sign up and use my promo code JTrain to get your first perfume or cologne for just $10. Sign on, smell amazing. Here with Akash Singh. Go, 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 go follow, go follow, go follow. Akash Singh on Instagram. It's on my Instagram right now. Did having sex on the fourth date ruin everything? Oh, that's a good question. You and your fiance were together? Here's the thing. We were each other's first. You were each other's first. Which I don't even know. if I, I haven't done a bit about it, so I don't even know how many comics know that. But I waited. You and waited. And we met very quickly. How old when you met? You want to know? Yeah. 31. You met at 31. I'm 31. She's 22. So. How did you guys meet? Hoboken Comedy Festival. She had a fat ass and I followed it. <laughs> you just followed it out of the door. Followed out of, it. Out I of literally, the room. real thing. I even have a bit about this. So I say, for, I said, this girl could be Indian, but the ass is Dominican. I must see what this is. And so yeah. I followed her, hoping she was Indian, and she was. You're like, and that, that was it. It was, that's it. That's wifey. That might be a Jewish chick <laughs> with a tan. I got to know. I have to know. <laughs> If yeah, Indian, because Indian girls are, I, I think they're so beautiful, but they don't normally have great asses. It's just not a thing. Indian women are beautiful women. Love them. They're my, that's my women, but they don't normally have asses. And she had descending toe length, which is very important for me. Okay. And I was, I was descending like, descending toe length. I heard those two, and I heard she was doing like a co op with Goldman Sachs. And so she was like, that's she's everything. Working. everything. Well, yeah. There's the three things I need right there. So. She's 22, you're 31 at the time? 31. Old, the age nine. difference? So I would never do that again. Just what? mentally. She, she is, she'll she be like, uh, hey, babe, would you ever, she's, getting, she's 26 now. She's like, would you leave me for someone younger? And I'm like, are you fucking crazy? You think I would go through that hell go through it. again? What, uh, what, what, uh, so it was your first time at first 31. Time. It was pretty quick because I was like, at this point, I know this girl's at least, once I hit 30, I was like, Were you like, waiting? I'm not, what, what, I was going to wait till marriage. And then when okay. I wasn't married by 30, I was like, well, she, she don't need to be my wife. But, like, she's got to be somebody that I, I know Special I'll to care you. about. Yeah. Was that, why, why was that important to you? I, I, I'm not asking that in a judging way. No, I'm asking I know. That. There's a, a lot of weird reasons. I think I didn't want to just date casually. And I think it got pushed back because comedy, I was like, I don't want to bring a girl I care about back to this shithole where I live where mm-hmm. I'm making literally $12 a week. You wanted... So you wanted to have sex with someone that you truly felt a future with. Yeah, and I think I was going to wait till marriage because this is, like, weird. But I know, like, 
I was helped a lot by people who weren't my father that were just like positive male role models for uh, me. Yeah. So I was like, let me try to carry that forward in some way. And you don't have to. I would never tell anybody you have to do what I did ever. I would just try to let them know it's possible. That's it. Okay. Uh, Jared, an awesome guest. I've been listening to your podcast for over a year now, but this is my first time writing in. I'm in my early 20s, and I met this guy on Tinder, and he seemed like a dream. Very cute. Found out that I do hot yo- uh, cute and found out that I do hot yoga. I'm extremely into fitness. I do CrossFit and hot yoga religiously, and I'm actually starting yoga teaching training tomorrow. He seemed very interested in yoga, and we planned to go together for our first date. I looked him up on Instagram and realized one of my best friends was following him, so of course I texted her and was like, who is this? He seems amazing. To my surprise, she said he, uh, she was talking to him. I'm very direct and texting him, wait, are you talking to my friend blank? And he brushed it off and said they Snapchat, but they have never hung out in person. I ignored him for the night, but then my friend said it was fine if I hung out with him since she'd never met him in person. He literally booked the yoga class online and paid for it and picked me up right on time the next day. We had great conversations and great time at yoga. I love talking, taking boys to hot yoga for the first time because it's low-key funny to see them dying, LOL. The next week, we went bowling together and had a blast. Afterwards, we went back to his place, and I met his roommate. We watched TV for a little and made out, but nothing else. My mom was coming into town the next night, and he said he wanted to see me before he went out of town for the weekend for his birthday, so he took me for sushi and ice cream. He was so sweet and easy to talk to, and we went back to his place again and made out, but nothing else. And he got back from his birthday weekend that Monday, and I said I'd take him for sushi, and that was on me. We went and had a great time, and I really felt like we had this amazing connection. We went back to his place, and I was planning on sucking his dick, but his but, <laughs> but this guy had the moves, uh, had the moves, and before his pants were even off, he made me orgasm twice. So I'm in the heat of the moment. I decided to have sex. He told me he wanted to sleep. Uh, he wanted to sleep over, but for some reason, my severe anxiety got the best of me, and I couldn't sleep. He was really sweet and reassuring that it was okay, but uh, but by 7 in the morning, I asked him to take me home. The next day was my best friend's birthday party, and I invited him to the pregame. He had to study for a major exam, but stopped by anyways, which I thought was really sweet. The next day, I texted him first and said I was so happy he came, but today was radio silence. He is only Snapchatting me and very sparsely and hasn't made plans to see me again. Do you think it was sex It was all he wanted? I don't know why I'm so heartbroken right now. I take sex very seriously and try to wait because I, it clouds my emotions, but now I feel played and hurt. He told me he had a very busy week with exams, but I'm not sure if that means he can't text me. Please let me know what you think and if I should try to pursue this further or I'll just get my heart broken. I haven't liked a guy this much in over a year. Thanks so much for your input. Um, what do we think? Initially, I thought all this guy wants to do is fuck you. Like, no guy's interested in yoga. Of course, they're interested in yoga teachers because they're hot. And sure. But yeah, the the it's a tough one because I feel for her. She's very nice. She sent some pictures. She does want a celeb to look alike from classic shell. Do we have another one for the last one? She was like kind of every race mixed together. So it's kind of tough. For OK, me. so what, what do you got for this one? Do you have uh, any thoughts on she's very cute. Do you have any thoughts on what this she should do? Do you know? I, it's it's tough to say if she was played. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that she was played because it seems for four dates, I was ready to say this guy was a creep off rip, but it seems like for four dates he cared. Mm. And then, I don't know, maybe the sex just wasn't what he thought it was, but let me tell you something, girl. You're cute. I don't know if you realize this or not. She's very cute. You're cute. So, like, you're fine. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I... It's tough because... I can feel her emotion through the email. Like she says she takes sex very seriously yeah. and try to wait and it clouds my emotions, but now I feel played and hurt. And I feel for her because here's what's going on right now. Um, the apps and the internet have made it really easy for guys who, f- guys who don't have the ability to fuck to fuck. Yeah. So like, I think what the apps have done is it's, like, this guy, the minute he was snapping with your friend at the same time he sna- he's talking with you, that's a guy who's not really out there for serious connections. That, that's my immediate, like, be out. Be out. Yeah. And, and it's not, he's not a bad person for that. He's in survival mode. His penis is driving the, is driving the car. 
And the penis was like, we got to fucking make sure we outrun the cops. <laughs> and we are, it's like, get, and, and I, I feel for it because this answer is not going to be like the nicest or the most savory. Yeah. Like he's out there. And, and again, like a lot of guys are out there to fuck and then they settle down. Like I, I understand that happens too, but I think the, I think the way people are, the problem is like you can't know. Like she could have never known. No, no. Right. I think the f- advice I would give her if this was a family member or like a f- actual of course. friend, I would say, I don't think this is the guy. I do think there is a guy for you, and I think when that happens, you'll look back at this and all the shit that everybody else third party was like, "Oh, that's weird. He's talking to your friend. Oh, that's whatever." You'll take that and you'll be like, "Oh, I now I know better." But I'm not yeah. mad. I went through it. Of course, it, every experience is a good experience yeah. because it gets you to the next experience. Like that's, you know, and that sounds like a riddle and kind of like annoying and kind of like not like not real until you've been through things and you go, oh, like she, I will say like you went on four dates with them. The sex didn't ruin things. It's that like your sex was fine. You're, you're a very pretty girl. You're very, you're, you're a great partner to someone this guy wasn't even was giving you surface level shit. Like you're on a date. I the thing is like a lot of guys don't care that much to go to the birthday party. They don't care that much to show up and put in show face. Right. If it's in service of their penis. Like right. you know, like it's yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. you know like she's like he went to hot yoga. Okay, still hasn't gotten off. Yeah, he's not paying for hot yoga. He's paying for a shot at having sex with you. Yeah, there there's a lot to that. Yeah. It's like, and, and this happens a lot. This is the thing. This is kind of back to my point of like these apps and the technology have made it so guy, like there used to be, and I've talked about this a little bit before on this podcast where it's like, there used to be guys that would, that before all this stuff would have to go out every night and be a dude who fucks. Yeah. Like that's an exhausting life, <laughs> you know, to not, go out. Not staying and tweeting the bachelor. That's right. Guy who stays in and tweets The Bachelor, now there's six nights left of the week to fuck. Yeah. Guy who goes to work every day, there's like three nights to go out and fuck. Yeah. Now with technology, you've been given back seven nights of the week to look, to be, to be giving attention to people that you could set up for sexual things in the future. They're passing the savings on to you. Exactly. And multiple people at once. the savings on to you. You're right. It's true. Because that's that's the game here. Yeah. And this guy who's on sushi date one and two and goes to hot yoga, she's going, I understand where she's like, these are girlfriend, boyfriend dates. Yeah. These you're aren't. Right. You're right. But the technology is given, he can go in the bathroom during your girlfriend, boyfriend dates and go, hey, yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm free for next week to someone else. I'm free later tonight. Exactly. This girl takes sex seriously. I'm free later tonight. So this is why the perspective has to change. She's like, well, he did all these nice things, so I like him. You got to start thinking of how you like people differently than the nice that you have to. And she goes, well, then he gave me an orgasm, so I, I had sex. I was like, we have to start switching the perspective where it's like, no, do you, what do you like in a guy? Do you like that he... Went on the sushi dates, or did you have fun on the sushi dates? Oh, I think she had fun, but you know what's funny to him is it's probably a currency exchange. We just exchanged orgasms. I gave you two, I got one. So, like, <laughs> I don't see what the big deal is here. He's he's like, we all got, we all did. Right? Yeah, like, like, like well, this, and it's also this version of being a gentleman. Like, if he had right away just been like, yeah, it, it's really nice to meet you. I think you're hot, and I'd love to go out and drink, and let's go out and get drunk, and we'll hook up at the end of the night. She would prefer that now. Because yeah. she would go, well, at least, at least I knew what I the knew. deal was. Yeah. Instead, he went this, like, girlfriend route where he's like, I'm going to be a boyfriend type. Because that's how you win her, at least then. Yeah, and it's like this old school, you're using old school tactics to get, you know, it, it's just, it's hard for me to answer the email because I what she should do is she should be, you have to be so straight up honest with what you want because he won't do that. So you have to say to him, hey, um, I had fun with you on all the sushi dates, and then I had a great time with you in bed. Um, I'm looking to get to know you more. Are you down for that or not? And yeah. if you're down, make a plan. 
Yeah. And at that point, he either does or he doesn't. Or he makes an excuse, and the excuse means he's not. That's great advice. I, I would say another thing, and I hate to say because I already told you I didn't have sex, so it could sound very preachy, but if you take sex, quote, very seriously, yeah. four dates ain't that long. So either make them wait longer or take sex a little less seriously. Yeah, and, and guys don't dump because girls don't have sex. That's yeah. kind of the secret. If they like you. They'll keep, pursu- you know, like guys will dump because sex matters to them. Yeah. But it won't be because the other person didn't have it. Does that make sense, the differentiation? I, I actually don't fully understand you, but okay. even if that's your perception, <laughs> I'll let you explain. But even if that's your perception, that's apparently not the kind of guy she wants to be with. A lot of girls, whatever, if that's your thing, that's your thing. But she's like, I take sex seriously. Absolutely. So if a guy is like oh, she's not having sex, I'm out. And that's not the guy she wants. Sex tastes different to everybody. But, yeah. like, there'll be a guy that'll go, like, like, like if you're, like, we have a lot of people that are writing, I'm a virgin. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, guys, he's not dumbing you because you're a virgin. He's ending it because he doesn't want, he doesn't see the relationship going beyond to a point where he wants to be responsible for your virginity. Right. That's the two yeah. different things. Yeah, it's not yeah, that yeah. he's not fucking. Yeah. It's that he doesn't want to be responsible for that big moment of your life. Yeah. And the match isn't the match. It's actually gentlemanly of him. J Train Podcast is Jimmy.com. Oh, yeah. Uh, who's she look like? Uh, the, the actress from The Hangover who's getting married and waiting for everybody to come back. Yeah. Oh. Vaguely, I vaguely know who you're talking about. Nobody it's, knows her name, but, you know. The, she was the, the we've wife. We've seen the movie. Um, he's calling Bradley Cooper and saying, where are you? Hangover wife of Doug? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, is it Tracy Billings? You say so. <laughs> Let's see if it is. Images. How does not an image? She really didn't. She does look like her. Holy shit. Classic Shelb nails another oh. one. Yeah, there's her. Good one, Shelb. Uh, let's do some more emails. J train podcast at gmail.com here with Akash Singh. Go, go, go at Akash Singh. Vancouver at the Playhouse, May 7th. Also, Comedy Nest in Montreal, The Den in Chicago. Tuesdays, Flagrant 2. That's the podcast. We're sponsored by ZipRecruiter. Hiring used to be hard. Multiple job sites, stacks of resumes, a confusing review process, but today hiring can be easy. And you only have to go to one place to get it done, ZipRecruiter.com slash JTrain. ZipRecruiter sends your job to over 100 of the web's leading job sites, but they don't stop there. With their powerful matching technology, ZipRecruiter scans thousands of resumes to find people with the right experience and invite them to apply to your job. And you can even ask Add screening questions to your job listing so you can filter candidates and focus on the best ones. I will tell you this right now. If you're in a position of hiring someone, ZipRecruiter is the place to do it because ZipRecruiter is so effective that four to five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Damn. And right now, to try ZipRecruiter for free, my listeners can go to ZipRecruiter.com slash JTrain. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash JTrain. ZipRecruiter.com slash JTrain. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Let's do some more emails. Okay, ready? Oh, I'm ready. Can't escape my ex even on vacation. It's like forgetting Sarah Marshall. Papa JT, classic Shelb and guest. I'm in a weird situation. I live in D.C. and recently got out of a two-year relationship. Broke up January 2nd. My best friend lives in NYC, so I decided to book a trip and escape my city for a weekend, which included buying tickets to go to one of my favorite nightclubs in Brooklyn. I just had brunch with a mutual friend of my ex and I, and she let me know that my ex was planning to travel to NYC with her that same weekend and was planning to go to the same nightclub the same night as me. What are the chances? I know we're going to eventually run into each other, but I'd rather it not be on my weekend away. So what should I do? Do I text the friend? Uh, post brunch and ask her to derail his plans? Do I reach out to him? Do I ask my group to try and sell our tickets? I really don't even want to open the door to communications. Thanks. Uh, What do we think? I feel like if you really got to go to that club, then you can ask a friend to derail. But also, do you really got to go to that club? It's Brooklyn. Yeah. (laughs) What nightclub is in Brooklyn? exactly. I don't know. Getting into the city. Yeah, city clubs. I, I don't know. I... How do you feel about seeing exes? I mean, it sounds pretty soon. 
No. No, that's super soon. There's no way that's I I mean, listen, I obviously got very little dating experience, but that doesn't seem like that seems like that's gonna go down a very specific road. So the she's coming to New York. The ex is coming to New York too the same weekend. They're gonna be at the same club. She's already found this out ahead of time. To me, I know she doesn't want to see him, but like I think it's time to go through like life. Like I think like life's uncomfortable. I think any awkward situation you go through awkward and not around awkward. Oh, interesting. Like, it's like the name thing. Yeah. If I had just kept going with, like, if I was like, if I didn't ask you about Akash yeah. versus Akash, yeah. I'd sit here in my head for the rest of the week going, man, did I fuck up his name? Did I do, you know, like, and, and I, I, and just talking it out, it's over. Yeah. And I understand why she's, like, like worried about seeing it. I've seen exes out. Whenever I see an ex out, I do the same thing. Hey, how have you been? Great to see you. And and if you lead, they have to follow your lead. I, I talk about with, with stand-up comedy, whenever there's a host, I host a lot of shows, mm -hmm. okay? When I host, my, my biggest pet peeve when other people host is they'll go, you guys ready for more show? Like, you have to do the hosting. Right. I get it. I do it. Yeah, I go, you ready for more show? And then they go, they clap, clap, clap. Okay, our next comic you've seen on MTV, give it up for Akash Singh. Yeah. Okay, that's how you say it. When you go, give mama for a ma ma ma, yeah. the crowd knows to clap. Yes. Just by the nature of how you say it. Yes. You lead, they clap. Yes. It bothers me when some hosts at comedy shows, they'll go, your next comic, and no one's clapping because they're listening to them go, your next comic you've seen on, they'll go, your next comic you've seen on MTV. Ah, uh, come on, guys. Come on, clap, start clapping now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, you don't have to do that. If you do the cadence, you the crowd will clap. Same thing for seeing an ex. Yeah. If you do the cadence... The X will be cool. So this, and, and you also have to be over the X. That's what I don't think she's over. She's like, <laughs> I'm true. not ready to see him yet. So to me, it's not awkward. It's like she doesn't want this to get back to they don't want to get back together, whatever. Yeah, but she can do the cadence. Here, here's the thing. If you're gonna if you know you're gonna see an X, yeah, go look in the mirror and go, you're not getting back with this X. It's over. There was no reason. It ended for a reason. It ended for the best. The experience will be the good experience when you look back at it. Okay, mm. look in the mirror, say to yourself, the X is the X for a reason. Bite the bullet, have a vodka soda after. Have a vodka soda after, bite the bullet. No. And you just go in with cadence. You won hey. me over, you're right, you won me over. I understand what you're saying, like, I, I understand that, like, <laughs> but like, like you, every day of your life, you're gonna do things you don't wanna do. Yeah. That's, that's how it goes. Yeah. That's what we've all signed up for. So, you walk into this club, you see him, the minute you see him, you go, hey, this is awkward. Great to see you. Hope all is well. Have fun. Boom. Just don't make a scene in a nightclub. No, you don't, don't want to be do that. that person. It also, Heels in your hands. That's a Manhattan dick, for Christ's sake. Yeah, I mean, I you, mean you're... You broke a, up with this guy in Brooklyn. I know. This is... It's it, time to up your game. Seriously. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. You know what train goes to Manhattan? J Train. What's... Well, that's Brooklyn. right. Is it possible for someone to not want to be in a relationship after five years? Yeah, right? Hi, I love your podcast. Recently found it through uh, Secret Capers Club. Thank you for coming over. So a little background. I just got out of a five-year relationship. I'm 23. He's 25. So we get, got into this very young. We both still have genuine feelings for each other and love each other, but he was uh, he slash we feel kind of trapped being that we know nothing else besides each other. In true girl fashion, I'm running the entire relationship in my head wondering if it was all a lie and if he even liked me, but I don't think guys stay in five relationships they don't want to be in and they don't didn't see a future with. My question, is it possible for a guy to love you and say he just can't be in a relationship right now to be true? Yeah. I've yeah, seen I think that. that's yeah. true. Oh, especially with couples who get together young, stay together six, seven years. I've seen that where it's like, she's great. I just, as a man, it is in my genes to want to go see everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I understand. This is like one of those things where it's like, 
It's like the unexplainable truth. Like she's like, I'm going back and thinking everything was a lie. You could look at that with anything. Yeah. Like your parents told you there was Santa Claus. You know, like, <laughs> like your whole life was a lie if you look back at it that yeah. way. If yeah. you go back and choose, you know, there's... They still put presents under your tree. They put the presents down and they said, clean up the mess after you're done opening the presents. Yeah. All of it was to teach you something. Right. So Santa Claus didn't exist, but it taught you how to clean up and how to say please and thank you. Yeah. So like, this is kind of, it's, I don't really look back. There's not one relationship and I, maybe this is the privilege of being a man that doesn't have like this, like kind of baby clock running in the top corner 100%. of my screen. 100%. Because this feels like something very female to me. Yeah. To go, to be sitting there going, well, like you met when you were 18. Yeah. You were 18 years old, okay? To look back at that and go, how could he waste my 19? You're, it's like you, you didn't waste wasted anything. wasted his college peak fuck years. <laughs> You yeah, wasted his. If you were thirty different stories. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. Like nobody is doing anything they don't want to do. Like, and, they, and this is yeah, the reality. Yeah. Like everyone's is, everyone is doing whatever they do for a reason. Yeah. Whatever their reasons are, they're there for it. Like this last guy that we answered the email about him going to yoga class. He was at yoga class. He wanted to be there. He wanted to get to know you for some reason. Yeah. She feels played because she's like, oh, it was for the penis. Yes. And it wasn't for the meat, but it was you in in in, in conjunction with wanted. the penis. Yeah. I took, uh, I remember like, well, obviously I want to be a doctor, so we had to take an evolution class. And the thing that stuck with me forever was they said there's two things that drive every species in genetic, mm -hmm. like according to evolution. Number one is... Uh, genetic investment is called. So men, our sperm is dumb cheap. We make, like genetically, we make like a billion a day or whatever, mm -hmm. 85 billion a day. Women get a set number of eggs for their entire life. Mm -hmm. So they protect those because that's all they got. So they're very selective about who they have sex with and reproduce with. And for men, we don't know if when we have a baby, it's ours. That's the second part of this. So if you're any species until humans 20 years ago, if a woman had a baby, she knew it was hers because she gave birth to it. A man just had to look and guess. So, man, the sperm is cheap, and I don't know if it's my baby. In every species, pretty much, we just try to fuck everything because we're like, well, that's the only way I know if I'm spreading my seed. Women are selective because it's like, yo, I don't have that many eggs, so I hold on to this these. This makes sense. And I know the baby's mine, so whatever. I'll pick the best guy. Totally. And that's why, guys, if you just understood that about men, so many of your heart, you're like, your they suck feelings would go away. And this from a dude who's the opposite. I get it. Yeah. And it's also, and, and it shows in the sad reality of like, it's not that personal. It's not, dude. And like, I just, when she says, I'm looking back at the last five years, let's look forward. Let's look at the, let, if you want to look back and look negatively, I can't really do much for you because it's going to, it's going to hurt you. Yeah. You can look back at any experience negatively. You can look back at any experience positively too. Yeah. You learned how to clean up. You learned please and thank you because Santa was a lie. Yep. There it is. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com. Here with Akash Singh. At Akash Singh. Flagrant two. Go, go, go. Go listen to the podcast. Ooh. Ye old midnight insta like. <laughs> J train, I beg of you, please read this email. Recently, this guy I have had a crush on for over a year liked an Instagram post that is like two years old at midnight. Ooh, yeah. that's a flare. Oh yeah, that's his penis <laughs> on the desert island, like, <gasps> like just like pull. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, she sees that. Or it was an accidental like, but you know he's interested. He's interested. He was hard when it got oh, sent. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Obvi, yeah. I flipped. I shot a follow the next day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he hasn't followed back. So here's the progression of events. Yeah. It's midnight. Two, he, she gets a like at midnight from a uh, picture from two years ago. Yeah. She likes, follows the next day. He hasn't followed back. What do I do? Is throwing a like or two back too much? When do I tap out and unfollow? He has over 70,000 followers and is official on Instagram. Is it possible my follow got lost? Thank you, 
Um, what do you think? I think it's possible the father got lost. It's possible, especially in the morning. If he's up at 2 a.m., he's waking up later. He might be getting a bunch of follows and he doesn't know. But he, what do you think? Uh, what should she do? I love this little game. When I was single and I was just starting to holler at girls and I had a little TV credit, I was I loved the I like a couple pictures, you like a couple pictures game. It was my favorite. It's yeah. just like such an easy line to cast. It, it is. It's a non-investment investment. Um, I'm going to say right now, she gave her Instagram handle, okay? Yeah. I want to tell the people right now for a celeb lookalike, okay? She's very cute. I'm going to show it to Shelby right now for the celeb lookalike. The, I wasn't going to bring up the celeb lookalike because I went to her Instagram just to, you know, because she gave it and I was going to skip it over. Um, but she did ask. She asked for an Instagram. Uh, I skipped it sometimes because I feel like, you know, I don't want to do 7,000. I don't want this to become a celeb lookalike show. So, do I. <laughs> yeah, Shelby and I both. She looks but, like the girl from that show, Orphan Black. Orphan Black. Mm-hmm. How do you do this? What the fuck is that show? What's her name? I don't know. The cast? The lead. Oh, she's the lead. We know she's cute. Okay, yeah. Tatiana Maslani? I think that's it. Is this her? Yes. She does look like her. This is quite a pull from Classic Shell. I mean, this is crazy. This is crazy. Um, here's what I'll say. The only so she said at the end, uh, just to make sure, and Shell, please give me a celeb look alike. Uh, I will cry. My insta is blank. Okay, so we gave her a celeb look like the her bio mm-hmm. on Instagram is don't come here to like old pics unless you're willing to marry me. <laughs> I'm wondering if that was put up before or after she got this midnight she can't like. can't be that crazy, right? You can't get up a, a like and then say, hey, marry me. I, I well, like- I get the joke. I, I Like, I like her personality. I think she's funny. Um, I'm wondering when that was up. Because if it's up before, if that bio is there before. Let's assume before. B- b- so the like yeah. came after that bio was up? Yeah. That's him sending a message. I think so. It could be even like a playful, like, yeah, let's do this. That was another so he thing didn't I... like and unlike. No, he liked. Okay. It's a full on like from two years ago. If I'm her, you send the message. Oh, send the message. But yeah. it could get lost in his message requests. We It could. I would doubt that. I have more followers than this guy. Mm-hmm. I see everything. Flex. Like, Flex. Yeah. That's right. So I have more followers than him, and I see it all. Yeah, I would see it. I'd see the follow. I'd see the like. We see. Yeah, that's true. I will say this to her. We have to stop. Instagram can be a start of your relationship. I don't doubt that. Instagram could be where two people get married from. I have no doubt of that either. I hate when people put levels on where you can meet people seriously and not. Yeah. People have gotten married for meeting at bars. They've gotten married for meeting on planes. They've gotten married for meeting on a podcast. They've gotten married for meeting from passing on the street. True. They've gotten married for, me- for meeting through a newspaper, Miss Connections, where they wrote, hey, I saw you. Who's the guy in the green shirt? And the guy in the green shirt saw it in the paper. Yeah. So it can happen anyway. But let's not make the reality more serious than the reality. Mm. You're on Instagram. This is all fun and games. You saw a like. That's enough to let you know he's seen you. Yes. You have to own, I find you attractive. Be vulnerable. You can't approach people without being vulnerable. Very true. Because you'll get nothing. If you can't get hurt, you can't find love. It goes both ways. This is all gravity. So you send the message, hey, just saw that you liked a picture of mine. Thought I'd say what's up. You can be vague. Give him enough rope for him to hang himself with it. Mm. And at that point, we can all make it happen. Like, like, let's not assume people are lazier than us or more energetic than us. Let's assume they're just like us. Mm. If you got the message, she goes, I think he's cute. She likes this guy. Yeah. If you got that message, you would go, hey, let's do drinks. You would take the bait. 100%. So if he likes you and he's just as attracted as you are to him, He'll take the bait. 100%. Or not. 
that's the reality. Another quote from my friend Andrew that I remember. Please. Uh, I was all broken up about this girl that didn't like me back or whatever, stupid, stupid shit. And he said, let me tell you something. The moment you are immune to rejection in any field, you become unstoppable. The moment you stop being affected by rejection, whether it's women or comedy or anything you're doing, it's true. you are a fucking superhero. And I have thought about that ever since. And if you're going to holler at this guy and he doesn't, who cares? He doesn't know you. He knows a fucking avatar and a couple of fake pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Holler it's, at it, everybody. Yeah, why not? Who cares? And call it out. Here's the thing. Yeah, and, and think of it. I totally agree with you. The minute you go, I'm just trying to get through no's to get to the yes. Yes. I'm just trying to siphon out the bullshit. So I think that what's important for that advice, too, is to say, hey, I'm out here. Whoever, this is a great party. Whoever comes to this party, they're going to love it. Exactly. But not everyone's going to come. And that's on them. That's and that's their, on them. That's their loss. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com. Akash Singh, do we got time for news or one more? What do you prefer? We got, let's do some news. You ready? Sounds great. Thanks for answering the email at Akash Singh. Go follow Flagrant Twos the podcast every Tuesday. Let's do some uh, news. Guys, baseball fans. Uh, I like baseball. Hate it. But, Hate uh, it. But I'll talk about the Astros or whatever. And you're a Houston guy. I'm Dallas. My da- folks live in Houston now, so okay. I see it a little bit. Cause uh, it's got to be Astros, right? Baseball starting up again soon. Yeah. Let's play two. You're Let's also do it. into healthy eating. Do you know who Gabe Kapler is? I do. Gabe He's a Kapler Texas was a Texas Ranger. He was a Texas Ranger. Good looking guy. Jewish guy. Possibly. I know for a fact. I know all the Jewish athletes. Good for him. <laughs> all seven. Best Jewish athlete right now. Right now? Maybe in history. Let's do both. History and current. Well, <sighs> technically Amari Stoudemire. Technically Amari Stoudemire. Yeah, you did a convert. Um, we didn't know that. There was a guy that played for UCLA who was Jewish and then played when? for the Lakers recently. Jordan uh, Farmar. Jordan Farmar. Did not know. Yeah, I think Jewish. he's Jewish. Um, it was uh, Sandy Koufax. Well, Koufax is the one. Mm-hmm. That's the one that... That's your guy. That's the guy. Um, Kevin Euclid, friend of the podcast. I know Kevin Euclid. He's yeah. half Jewish. Yeah, baseball player, right? Yep. Yeah. The Red Sox Gabe Kapler. Yeah. Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman. Yeah, I'm trying to think really of... really stretching the term athlete, but yeah, sure. We're trying, we're trying. <laughs> Who's your favorite? Uh, Indian athlete? Yeah, do you There's have... one NBA player and then a bunch of cricket guys. And the That's NBA it. player will never touch an NBA floor. Who is he? Seth Nam Singh is his name. He's the seven-foot guy that got drafted. Oh, yeah. A billion to one shot or whatever. And then there's a couple other guys, Bular brothers, who are also not never going to see an NBA floor. It's and the then cricket, it's cricket players. Cricket stuff, do you ever watch it? You I ever... watch the World Cup every time, and I act like I'm so fucking knowledgeable. Yeah. But I'm just in it for those four weeks or whatever. And that's it. And then I invariably lose interest. So what's going on with Gabe Kapler? He's a very uh, fitness-oriented guy. That I know about him. He's He's a very good-looking dude. Great body. Yeah, he's uh, recently managed teams after. The Phillies. Yep. But in a recent uh, profile of him, this came out that early in his career, he was really... Like, he's very into fitness. Like, mm-hmm. he's even though he's retired, he's probably in good as shape as the players. Like sure. he's recently, but still he's kept it up. That uh, on the way back from a game at a college, the team stopped at McDonald's. And, uh, and he did not have his, it was like an impromptu. He didn't have his usual health food. It was very meticulous. So he got 40 chicken nuggets and peeled the skin off of all of them. Yeah, man, it is so tough. To I mean, I'm looking at a picture of him right now. Look up I mean, shirtless pic. Let's see. What I got we're it. With here. Oh, it's yeah. all here. Come on. I didn't even need to ask. We're ready to go. <laughs> um, I mean, he is an Adonis. He is Jewish. I looked that up. Made sure. Holy! I shit. mean, you don't this, get that body by accident. This was 1995. They had salads then. No, but the salads are more calories yeah, than some of the nonsense. burgers. You've seen those. Eat this, not that. Right. 
Here's the thing protein. about being healthy. You have to be publicly healthy. There's no way, like, I, like, I'm about to eat an RX bar. Yeah. I had oatmeal and a shake this morning. I'm going to have an RX bar right now because I'm getting hungry. Right. You might have to wait. I think the next guest is here. Well, we're going to have to make some time. That's the thing. This is exactly what it is. For me to live, I could then, let's say the next guest comes in. I say, oh, I don't want to take out my RX bar. I got to go and eat, you know, I'll go to like, you know, Whatever burger hut, and now I can get it real quick. Look at Shelby's packing apples. I bought a new apple slicer. You bought a new apple slicer. I saw on Instagram. This is a big day for you. I'm loving it. It's a big. Day. <laughs> Shelby's is really crushing apples right now. Shelby just pulled out. Put it on camera. Do we? Can we get it on? Do we have it? Shelby just pulled out a bag of apples like he's seven, Love and his it. mom packed it for him for lunch. Love yeah. it. You, when you're healthy, you put yourself, you are now putting yourself out there to be made fun of. Mm -hmm. So the Gabe Kapler thing where he's, you know, he's, you know, taking out his chicken McNugget slicer to get the, you know, to get the inside of the McNuggets. That makes sense to me. Yeah, 100%. Nobody talks shit on the person who can just eat normally. And to get this body, you have to do that. And we have to hate on that guy because we don't like what we look like. And yes. fuck that guy for looking like that. Fuck him. So, if, oh, you're so crazy. You go and buy 40 chicken nuggets. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah. I, I don't want to live on myself. I don't want to do I've. I, I mean, when I was really healthy, I was walking around with peanut butter and a tablespoon, taking two tablespoons of peanut butter. This is N- recently. But no one can really, no one, I do that still sometimes. Mm-hmm. It always is like a look. It's always a thing. Yeah. It can never not be a thing to be healthy. And that's why it's so tough to be healthy because not only is it hard to eat that way, but it's also hard to deal with the social stigma of I think I'm better than you because now I'm peeling McNuggets. I feel like a douchebag buying fucking kombucha at the store. It sucks. It's always a show. Always. And it's like... Get an acai bowl. Go fuck yourself. I know exactly what I look like doing that. Totally. And I'm taking Gabe Kapler's side. Yeah, 100%. Good for him. Thank you for bringing the news, Shelby. Thanks for having me. At Classic Shelb on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, Akash Akash Singh, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me, man. This was such a pleasure. Great. Great. Go follow Akash right now at Akash Singh on Instagram. Flagrant 2 is the podcast. Montreal, Chicago, Vancouver Playhouse, AkashSing.com. It'll be on my Instagram, so you can go check out all of those dates. I'm Jared Freed. We're here every Tuesday and Friday. We'll be back next episode. Boom.